तस्मै श्री गुरवे नम नम ओं विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा श्रीमती भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात देश तारिणे पंचकौपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पवान्ेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधार श्रीवासदिगोर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वी वेलकम एवरी वन टू आर ऑन गोइंग स्टडी ऑफ द भागवत गीता and this evening we're going to look at some of the main points of chapter 7 ขอต้อนรับทุกคนนะคะเข้าสู่คลาสปกวดคิตาของเรากันอย่างเช่นเคยนะคะวันนี้ก็เราจะมาเรียนกันในบทที่7นะคะ we could say the bhagavad gita is in three sections you know there are 18 chapters and six chapters in each section so the first section which we completed was covering the yoga ladder แล้วก็พอพอที่ตาเนี่ยความจริงแล้วจะแยกออกเป็นสามส่วนนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นส่วนแรกอันนี้เนี่ยเราเรียนบทที่หนึ่งถึงบทที่หกจบไปแล้วนั่นหมายถึงว่าเราเนี่ยจบไปแล้วในส่วนแรกนะคะแล้วก็โยคะเนี่ยได้แบ่งไว้เป็นระดับขั้นบันไดนะคะ And you remember at the end of the sixth chapter Lord Krishna had said the highest yoga was the bhakti yoga so now we're beginning chapter seven and it's going to introduce bhakti yoga เราต่อไปเนี่ยเราก็กำลังจะเริ่มบทที่เจ็ดนะคะซึ่งบทที่เจ็ดเนี่ยจะให้เราเรียนรู้เกี่ยวกับบัคติโยก So the middle section, chapter seven up to chapter twelve, we'll all be speaking mainly about b a k t i yoga. เราในส่วนนี้เนี่ยจะพูดตั้งแต่เจ็ดถึงหลังจากเจ็ดนี้ไปใช่ไหมคะจะพูดในส่วนของบัคติโยก We may wonder. Why on a battlefield do we need to know about bhakti yoga? But remember, this is not just an ordinary war. This is a dharma yudh. This is fought according to religious principles. แต่ว่าอย่าลืมไปว่าความจริงตรงนี้เนี่ยมันไม่ใช่แค่สงครามธรรมดาทั่วไปแต่มันเป็นสงครามเพื่อศาสนา And Arjuna wanted; he had doubts about fighting, so Krishna had to remove. Go ahead. So the first, the first verse is describing Lord Krishna. He's speaking to Arjuna because he he said in the, at the end of the sixth chapter he said that bhakti was the highest yoga. So he's now he's telling Arjuna. He said that you have to hear from me. And hearing is the first step of bhakti yoga. แล้วก็ในส่วนท้ายของบทที่หกเนี่ยพิชาจะบอกถึงความสำคัญของบทที่โยกามาอยู่แล้วแล้วก็ในส่วนนี้เนี่ยพิชาเนี่ยก็จะเริ่มอธิบายเพิ่มเติมแล้วก็ในส่วนแรกเนี่ยพิชาก็จะบอกว่าบัดนี้เธอจงฟังเพราะฉะนั้นเรารู้ได้เลยว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยมันหมายความว่าขั้นตอนแรกในการพัฒนาความรู้ทิพย์ก็คือขั้นตอนแห่งการสลับฟัง Lord Krishna is saying you have to practice yoga in consciousness of Krishna. So if you're going to be conscious of Krishna, if our mind's going to be attached to Krishna, first the first thing we have to do is to hear about Krishna. And the best person to hear to hear about Krishna from is Krishna himself. Go ahead. All right. Number three, describing out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection, 
and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So we can understand that there's so many people on the planet, so many millions of people, hardly how very and it's very few that any of them are even thinking about perfection. They simply think about eating and sleeping and mating and defending. And they never inquire about life. They never think about trying to understand who they are or trying to control the mind and senses. So there are there are a few people, not very many, but there are some people and they do get perfection, they work for perfection, they get yoga powers and uh, they have some they're, they're more advanced than ordinary people, but still they don't know Krishna in truth. So, the, the full perfection is when we actually understand about Lord Krishna. Go ahead. All right. Now Lord Krishna is beginning to describe the elements of the material world. There are five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And then there are three subtle elements, the mind, the intelligence, and the ego. So that, so there are eight elements all together and these are this is Krishna's material energy separated from him so just as we have a gross body we also have a subtle body but we also have a spiritual body. We're going to hear about the spiritual body in the next verse. This verse is describing prakriti, separated prakriti. Bina separated and prakriti means nature. My separated material energy. So, uh, the, the, we living entities, we are also prakriti, but we are superior because this prakriti does not have any consciousness, but we have consciousness. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Lord Krishna describes is it besides these, besides these means besides the material elements, the eight material elements, almighty armed Arjuna. There is another superior energy of mind which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of the material 
inferior nature. So here the, we are living we are also described as prakriti, right? But we have consciousness. And our consciousness is described in the verse that we are trying to exploit the resources of the material nature. We are thinking this material nature is just for my enjoyment. Yeah. So this is a disease, this is a problem. That we are thinking we are the proprietor, it's everything is for my pleasure. But we should understand we are also energy. We are and we're meant to be controlled by the the possessor of the energy, Lord Krishna. Go ahead. Lord Krishna says, all created beings have their source in these two natures. Two natures, right? There's two natures. There's the material nature and the spiritual nature. And then Krishna says, of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. So everything, it comes from Krishna and it goes back to Krishna. And we also come from Krishna and we go back to Krishna. Yes, go ahead. This is a very powerful verse to understand Krishna's position, very important. Lord Krishna said, O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. So you can see in the picture this string of pearls and we don't see the thread but there must be a thread there to hold the pearls together. So it's a very nice example because just as the, the pearls are all on a thread but we don't see the thread, in the same way this whole material world, the whole cosmic manifestation, it is all under Krishna's control. But we don't see Krishna. 
พระเจ้าเมือนกันนะคะเราเห็นสร้อยไข่มุกเนี่ยเรียงลายเป็นสร้อยที่สวยงามแต่ว่าในความสวยงามนี้เนี่ยเบื้องหลังก็คือมีเส้นได้อยู่ซึ่งเราเนี่ยไม่สามารถเห็นเส้นได้นั้นได้เพราะฉะนั้นเหมือนกันการปรากฏการธรรมชาติทางวัตถุต่างๆก็แล้วแต่ในความจริงแล้วผู้ที่อยู่เบื้องหลังธรรมชาตินี้เนี่ยก็คือคริชนาแต่ว่าเราเนี่ยมองไม่เห็นตรงเนี่ย people say well Krishna is holding it why can't we see him why can't we see him but just like these barrels are on a thread you can't see the thread and Lord Krishna is saying here that there is no truth higher than him he is the highest truth now sometimes people think Lord Shiva is the highest truth and some other people they may think Ganesh is the highest truth or some people may think Durga is the highest truth but they never say that only Lord Krishna says I am the highest truth there is no truth above me บางคนนะคะจะคิดว่าอ๋อพระศิวะเป็นสัจธรรมสูงสุดหรือเปล่าหรือว่าพระแม่ดุรกาเป็นสัจธรรมสูงสุดหรือเปล่าอะไรแต่ว่าความจริงแล้วนะคะเราเทวดาเนี่ยพวกท่านเนี่ยไม่เคยบอกว่าตนเองเป็นสัจธรรมสูงสุดเลยแต่ตรงนี้เนี่ยเราเห็นได้ว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยทรงตรัสว่าพระองค์เป็นสัจธรรมสูงสุด So by this verse, Lord Krishna is establishing himself as the supreme amongst all the thirty-three crore of the devas. Lord Krishna is not just a deva; he is. Just like Krishna says, he said, "I am the taste in water." Krishna จะบอกว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นรสชาติของน้ำ Water has a special taste, which not nothing else has that particular taste. Water, as soon as we taste it, we know this is water. So that taste, that is actually Krishna. And the same thing is true with the light of the sun and the moon. The light of the sun and the moon is also Krishna. And Krishna says he is the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. Om is the sound representation of Krishna. So in this section, Lord Krishna is describing his prominent how he's present in these different elements. And we see how Krishna is everywhere in everything, and the prominent quality in everything that is Krishna. Just like ether. The only quality which is in ether is sound. There's no smell. There's no taste. There's no touch. There's no form. There is only sound. So, Lord Krishna says, "I am the sound in ether." And then Lord Krishna says, "He is the ability in man. Every each and every man has some kind of ability, and that ability comes from Lord Krishna." Krishna 
คือทุกคนเนี่ยจะมีความสามารถที่แตกต่างกันไปแล้วพระองค์ก็คือความสามารถของความสามารถในมนุษย์ and then with earth the fragrance of the earth that is Lord Krishna แล้วก็ดินนะคะกลิ่นเดิมแท้ของดินเนี่ย Krishna So if we take some earth, we will see it has a particular ar aroma or fragrance. So that is Krishna. And then Krishna says, "I am the heat in the fire." He's, Krishna says, "I am the life of all that lives." He said, "I am the penance of all aesthetics." I am the original seed of all existence. Krishna says he is the intelligence of the intelligent. And he is the prowess of all powerful men. And he is the strength of the strong. So in this way, you can see Lord Krishna is making it very easy for us to remember Him in everything. Who has not, every one of us have seen the light of the sun and the moon? We can understand that is Krishna. When we drink some water, that taste of water that should remind us of Krishna. All of these different opulences. They are all there to help us to remember Krishna. Lord Krishna will expand on this in the tenth chapter. We'll hear more. Go ahead. Text number twelve. Lord Krishna explained, "Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy. I am, in one sense, everything, but I am independent. I am not under the modes of material nature, for they, on the contrary, are within me." จงรู้ไว้ว่าระดับแห่งชีวิตทั้งหมดไม่ว่าจะเป็นความดีตัณหาหรืออวิชาปรากฏออกมาด้วยพลังของข้าด้านหนึ่งข้าคือทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างแต่ข้าก็เป็นอิสระข้าไม่ได้อยู่ภายใต้ระดับของธรรมชาติวัตถุตรงกันข้ามธรรมชาติวัตถุอยู่ในอยู่ภายในข้า So the Lord Krishna is describing that there are three states of being. And they are called goodness, passion, and ignorance. And these some these are often called the modes of material nature. And. In the material world, all of us conditioned souls we are under the control of these modes of nature. And usually, there is a prominence more passion and ignorance, and very little goodness. And usually, there is a prominence more passion and ignorance, and very little goodness. 
So this is also Krishna's energy, the modes of nature is Krishna's energy. You can see in the picture the ladies are pulling the string. So we are like the men, we're, we're like these puppets, are, and we're being pulled and controlled by the modes of nature. We're under the modes of nature, but Krishna is not under the modes of nature. Krishna is rather the modes of nature, they're coming from Krishna, they're, they're Krishna's energy. Go ahead. So Lord Krishna is describing now how we can overcome that material energy, that material nature. He said the process to overcome it is to surrender to Krishna. But Lord Krishna describes it's very difficult to overcome the material nature. Just the, the personification of the material nature is Mother Durga. And Mother Durga means Dur means Ga. It's a home and got dirt, I mean, place very difficult to get out of. It's a pl the material nature is like a place which is very difficult to get free from. So how can we ever get free of the material nature? Just simply by surrendering to Krishna. And when we surrender to Krishna, then we can easily cross over that nature. Go ahead. So overcoming the modes of material nature. We can see, see sometimes you're maybe in the sea and it's so difficult if you're in the middle of the ocean. What can you do? You have no hope. But if Krishna comes on the back of Garuda, he can pick us up and take us out. <laughs> So you can see that, like these people in, in the pictures, they're stuck in the ocean. It's not easy. The, the water is so powerful and it's so vast. But if somebody comes, or like if Lord Krishna is coming on the back of Garuda, or somebody's coming on the boat to save us, then it's a great mercy. All right, go ahead. Oh, there's a nice pastime described in the Bhagavad Gita in the purport by Srila Prabhupada. He tells how a little sparrow lost her eggs to the ocean 
she'd made her nest on the sh on the, beside the ocean. And when the ocean came in, the water of the ocean took away her eggs. So a little, spa little sparrow was so upset, she vowed that she would drink the ocean dry to get back her eggs. So little sparrow does not have much hope to drink the ocean. Nobody took her very seriously, but the sparrow was very determined. And finally, Garuda came there, and Lord Garuda told the ocean, you give the sparrow back her eggs, or I will drink you dry. And so Garuda is very powerful, so the ocean brought back the eggs of the sparrow. <laughs> So in the same way we have to be determined like the sparrow, we have to learn from the sparrow the determination and we know in the, that Krishna or Garuda will help us. Go ahead. All right. So the, Lord Krishna was speaking how we have to surrender to him to cross over the material nature. So now he's describing people who don't surrender. So there are four different kinds of people who never surrender. First of all, one is called the... Uh, well, first of all, these people are all impious souls because they don't surrender to Krishna. So the first one is called the mudha. He's like a donkey. He works very hard. Although grass is everywhere, the donkey works very hard just to eat some grass. So people are so foolish, they will work all day and night, they will work their whole life just to fill the belly, just to eat some grass. And they never think about where they're going to take the next birth, what's going to happen to them after they die. They don't think about it. It's so foolish. All right. Then the second kind of person who doesn't surrender is called Naradhamma. He's the lowest of men. He's born in a good family and he has good education, but he doesn't take an interest in spiritual knowledge. Then the third kind is Maya Aparita Jnana. 
one whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. He tries to understand the scriptures by his own mind and intelligence. And then the fourth kind is the Asura Bhavam Ashrita, the people who are atheistic or nature of demons. So these are the four kinds of people who won't surrender to Krishna. Now we will see four kinds of people who do surrender. Now these people who surrender to Krishna, they're all pious people. And the first picture, you can see Gajendra the elephant. He's been bitten by the crocodile and he could not get free. But then he remembered, he prayed to Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu came and saved him. So, so Gajendra shows the type of person who's in distress and that's a very common reason for surrendering to Krishna because many people are in distress. Then in the second picture, we can see Dhruva Maharaj, the young boy, and he's been getting blessings from Lord Vishnu. Dhruva desired to have a kingdom. He wanted to have a great kingdom, a huge kingdom. And he went to the forest and he did great austerities for six months. And after six months, Lord Vishnu came and gave him his blessings, fulfilled his then some people come, pious people, they come out of curiosity. They have questions, they want to understand more. And they will come and they will hear their pious people. But the most important of the four people who come to surrender to Krishna, the, the, the best reason are those who come who are searching for knowledge of the Absolute Truth. So people who come in distress or search of wealth or out of curiosity, they all have to come to this position of searching for knowledge of the Absolute. Yeah, if they don't appreciate the knowledge, then they won't stay in Krishna consciousness. When the distress is over, they will go away. Or if they've come and look in search of wealth, when they get some wealth, they will go away. Or say somebody comes out of curiosity, when they're not curious anymore, they'll go away. 
ก็เพราะว่าเหมือนสมมติคนเนี่ยมาหากริชนาเพราะว่ามีความทุกข์มากแต่พอมาหากริชนาเรารู้สึกว่าเออความทุกข์มันหายไปแล้วก็คือโอเคไปแล้วดีกว่าความทุกข์หายไปหรือคนที่อยากจะมีความร่ํารวยพอบูชากริชนาเราได้ความร่ํารวยไปแล้วก็โอเคมไม่หากริชนาค่ะหรือว่าคนชอบถามตอนแรกมีความสงสัยแต่พอรู้แล้วก็อ๋อโอเคไม่มีความสงสัยก็ไม่อยู่ But the, those who are searching for knowledge, they will never go away. They'll never leave. So I think all of you who are listening to here, to listening to these classes, I understand you are also interested to get this knowledge. So I'm sure you're very confident you will never leave Krishna. Go ahead. Yeah, Lord Krishna is describing that all of the four kinds of people, the four reasons who came, four different kinds of people who came to Krishna. They're all good souls, but the best one is the one who are in search, who are situated in knowledge of Krishna. Krishna says that those people who are in knowledge of him, he considers them to be just like his own self. And because they're doing devotional service, they're sure to get to come to Krishna. They will get the highest and the best goal. Go ahead. All right. Here you can see the the yoga ladder. We were saying the first six chapters were describing the yoga ladder. So here you can see the yoga ladder represented. Right on the bottom we have karma yoga. And so people doing karma yoga, they they they're not too much attached to the to the result of their work. They give charity. They want to help, but they don't know much about what's going on. But on the higher level is Jnana Yoga, so they have to increase in knowledge. They have more knowledge, more understanding in that position. And with that knowledge, they become more renounced. Also, they become more detached from the material things. And so they get knowledge about the soul, and that brings them up to the next stage where they start meditating on the soul. And they practice, may practice Astanga Yoga. And if they understand properly how there are two souls, and the one soul is the supreme soul, and the other soul is the individual living entity. And that the supreme soul is the master, and we are the servant. Then they'll go on from astanga yoga to do bhakti yoga. And 
And it's bhakti yoga, which is the easiest process to perform. We can begin practicing bhakti yoga just by chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so Lord Krishna is describing what is the proper qualification to practice yoga. No, just a minute. Hey, wait, did you miss it? Hurry, Bo, hurry, Bo. Did you miss the slide? Did you jump a slide? Go back. Yeah, you missed Yeah, you missed this one. Oh. Yeah. So this is an important verse here, text 19, right? Because it's describing people, we were saying people with knowledge, they're the best. So what's the purpose of that knowledge? The purpose of that knowledge is that we will surrender to Krishna. After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me, knowing me to be cause of all causes and all that is. Such a soul is very rare. So people often ask, what is the goal of knowledge? So it is described here, the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Krishna. But if we take the path of knowledge, we see it takes many births and deaths. It's not a quick process. It takes a long time. Therefore, Krishna says such souls are very rare and it's not very common. Okay, go ahead. All right. Now Lord Krishna is describing about the worship of the demigods. Because not everybody wants to worship Krishna. Some people, they like to worship other gods or they think all the gods are the same. But it's described here that people of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruit is limited and temporary. And those who worship the demigods, they don't go to the spiritual world. They just go to the planets of the demigods in the material world. But Krishna says, my devotees, they will come to my supreme planet. So you can see demigod worship is not encouraged by Lord Krishna. Go ahead. This is a little story here. 
the, the point is that Lord Krishna gives only what is good for us. The demigods, they don't do that. So you can see in the, in the illustration, first of all, little boy is asking his father for ice cream, but his father says, well, no, he said, you have asthma, it's not good for you, better you will just take some custard. But then the uncle comes along and said, oh, I'll buy you three ice creams. So the boy is so happy, but then the final picture, you see the boy is in bed, he's in the hospital, he's sick, and he understood. He didn't listen to his father, and he didn't know, he, the uncle didn't know he had asthma, he didn't know it wasn't good for him to eat ice cream. And so he ended up getting sick. So his boy understood he should listen to his father. The same way we all should, should understand what is good for us, listen to Krishna. ละเสดเนพอคุณลุงมาคุณลุงเนี่ยไม่รู้ว่าเด็กน้อยเนี่ยมีมีโรคประจําตัวก็เลยแล้วเด็กน้อยบอกอยากกินไอติมคุณน้
can understand and know me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even at the time of death. Right. We want to be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. That means then we can go to be with Krishna. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, just finished in time. Okay. Are there any questions? This is, this is the first chapter in, on devotion, right? The first six chapters was more about karma yoga and the yoga ladder. And now we're hearing about bhakti yoga because bhakti yoga was described at the end of the sixth chapter as being the top of the yoga ladder. Yes. Okay. So there's some questions. Shaya Mataji has a question. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sila Prabhupada. อาจารย์ค่ะพี่มีความสงสัยพี่เคยได้ยินเอ่อเหมือนหลักธรรมของศาสนาฮินดูในบางสัมปทานะคะที่เขานับถือพระแม่เนี่ยค่ะว่าเ
อันนั้นก็เป็นหนึ่งส่วนนะคะแต่ว่าโดยถ้าเกิดว่าเป็นในส่วนที่เขาคิดว่าเขาจะไปเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกับเทพที่เขาบูชาอยู่เนี่ยเหลือเหลือเป็นที่เชื่อกันของอฮินดูส่วนใหญ่ก็คือการเขาที่เขาจะไปเป็นหนึ่งเนี่ยเขาก็จะไปถึงบรมันนะคะ It's more common that people know about impersonal liberation. Only the Vaishnavas know about the other kinds of liberation. There are actually five kinds of liberation. So, of the five kinds, only four of them are acceptable to a devotee. A devotee would never accept the impersonal liberation. Impersonal liberation means there's no opportunity to engage in devotional service. So impersonal liberation is like hellish for a devotee because he cannot do devotional service. Okay. Shaya, is that all right? Are you clear? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Kong Sawad Roji Hatel. ฮาริสนาครับครูมหาลัยครับผมมีคำถามนะครับอยากจะตอบถามว่ามนที่ได้ที่ตรวจเป็นประจำอย่างเช่นตรวจฮาริสนาเนี่ยมันจะทำให้เราบรรลุถึงเอกขวาได้ไหมโอเคฮะกุลมาชิสคำถามคือ the mantra that we are chanting now Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Can this mantra help us uh, to get the liberation? Oh yes, definitely. It can get you all perfect. It can get you much more than liberation. Devotees are not much eager for liberation. Liberation is easily achieved for a devotee. Devotees want to get devotion. They want to get much higher than liberation. แน่นอนนะคะมหามนบทนี้เนี่ยสามารถให้ความหลุดพ้นได้อย่างแน่นอนแต่ว่าสามารถให้เราเนี่ยมากกว่าความหลุดพ้นเสียอีกนะคะนั่นก็คือความรักต่อองค์พระขวานนั่นเองซึ่งความจริงเนี่ยสําหรับสาวกแล้วเนี่ยสาวกจะไม่ค่อยให้ความสําคัญกับความหลุดพ้นมากเท่าไหร่แต่ว่าสาวกเนี่ยจะให้ความสําคัญกับการที่จะพัฒนาความรักต่อพระชนามากกว่า You will see as we go on that The devotees, who, when we begin devotional service, we begin bhakti yoga on the liberated platform. So even in this lifetime, we can be liberated. We just have to understand our spiritual identity as a soul. That is liberation. But then we have to go on from liberation. We have to go on to develop our relationship with Krishna. So liberation is not the goal of a devotee. 
ดังนั้นความหลุดพ้นเนี่ยจึงไม่ได้เป็นจุดมุ่งหมายของสาวก Devotees can be liberated in this very lifetime when they use the body and the mind and the words in the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna. That is liberation. อันนั้นเนี่ยก็ถือว่าอยู่ในระดับแห่งความหลุดพ้นเรียบร้อยแล้วอ่าฮะ is that alright Prabhu can you understand everything เข้าใจไหมคะครับผมเข้าใจครับโอเคใช่ที่รู้บอกว่าเย้โอเคค่ะอ่าน้องกีตาวะคะเชิญเลยค่ะน้องกีตาฮาริคริชนาดันดอลวัดประนามกุรุมาราชพิสเอ็กซ์เซฟไมฮาบโอวิสักเซสออลกอริสตูชิลาบูบัสพี่อาจารย์นาคะหนูอยากถามว่าหนูอ่านเจอในภาวะกีตาค่ะเกี่ยวกับความทุกข์สามคำรบอะค่ะก็เลยอยากจะทราบว่าความทุกข์สามคำรบเนี่ยมีอะไรบ้างนะคะกุรุมาราชเขาถามว่า Uh, she read Bhagavad Gita and she find where it's explained about the three uh, miseries of this. So can you explain more what, what is these three miseries? Yes, the three miseries, first of all, there's miseries of our own body and mind, the pains and the diseases which we get with our body and our mind. That's a misery. Every part of our body can give us some misery. If we get some disease or some infection, there is so painful. It gives us so much pain and trouble. เออความทุกข์ที่เราได้จากร่างกายนี้ไม่ว่าจะเป็นการเป็นโรคหรือว่าเป็นอะไรก็แล้วแต่ความไม่ไม่สมบูรณ์แบบของร่างกายที่เราได้มันเป็นความทุกข์ที่เราได้จากร่างกาย And then the second misery is miseries which come from other living entities other living entities that can ประเภทที่สองก็คือความทุกข์ที่ได้จากสิ่งมีชีวิตดวงอื่นอย่างเช่นอาจจะเป็นยุงกาดหรือว่าคนมาทำลายจิตใจหรืออะไรมาทำให้เราเนี่ยได้รับความทุกข์ Sometimes as a student we have a teacher who is not nice to us and they give us a lot of trouble give us a lot of misery and sometimes uh, we have a we have a job And the people we're working with are not nice to us, and the boss or something is not nice to us. They can give us a lot of misery. ก็คือความทุกข์ที่เราได้จากดวงวิญญาณอื่นอาจจะเป็นแบบว่าเราไปเราไปโรงเรียนแล้วก็ครูครูเนี่ยไม่ชอบเราแล้วก็ทําให้ให้เราเนี่ยยากมากอะไรอย่างนี้ก็เป็นความทุกข์ที่เราได้จากครูครูหรือว่าการที่เราเวลาเราไปทํางานแล้วเราเจอเพื่อนร่วมงานที่ไม่ดีเราก็ได้รับความทุกข์จากบุคคลเหล่านั้น And some some neighbors are very nasty, give us a lot of trouble. Some neighbors say, "I don't want you to burn that incense; it's a horrible smell." And some neighbors will say, "I don't want you to cook with those spices; it's so smelly. I don't want this smell." So it's so difficult. You can get a lot of trouble from people. แล้วก็จะเป็นแบบว่าเพื่อนบ้านไม่ชอบนะเพื่อนบ้านบอกว่าเออเธอเนี่ยจุดทูบอยู่นั่นแหละเช้าเย็นกินทูบเราเหม็นมากเลยแล้วก็บอกว่าเธอทำอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเราเหม็นอาหารแขกเนี่ยเ
And you can get mosquitoes also. They'll come and they'll buzz in your face and in your ear and they'll bite you and they give you diseases. And you get things like dengue and malaria from them. And then there's this virus, this is COVID virus which comes and gives people a lot of trouble also and people even die from it. And then there are miseries due to material nature. Material nature means sometimes it's very hot or sometimes it's very cold. Sometimes it's very wet and there'll be a flood. Sometimes there's earthquake and the ground will open up. There's so much damage and so many people die. In Thailand, we had tsunami come, it hit, and it hit along the coast of Thailand, and Khao Lak and Phuket, many places were very badly damaged, many people died. These are different examples of miseries due to the material nature. Mother Durga carries a trident. A trident has three forks. One of the, each fork represents one of these miseries. Her job is to give trouble to people in the material world. So intelligent people think how to get out of this world. Okay. Okay, Okay, hi. Hi, Krishna. Yogi Tamadaji. Hi, Krishna Machi. Thank you. Hi, Krishna Gurudev. Please accept some humble obeisances. Ruti, I had two questions. The first one is, uh, in the man, the ability is the Lord. That means whatever services that we perform or we do, actually, it is the Lord who is serving himself. He's just allowing us to use the body to serve him. So, number one, it's actually the Lord, basically, we can say, is serving himself, right? We are doing nothing at all. It's just our desires have become positive towards serving the Lord. Can I look at it that way, Gurti? Well, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he said, I am not responsible for people's sinful or pious activities. Mm. Okay. Even when it's connected to serving him directly, even then, he, he says he's not responsible. I mean, since he's giving us the ability, right? Well. Can we credit him with that? Because then the false ego definitely takes over. You know, a lot of times we get proud of, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Even devotees, service-wise. There's a tendency well, to be Lord Krishna of... does say, he does say in the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, mm. he should become an instrument in my service. Mm. So we have to be an instrument. There are different ki kinds of instruments. Some instruments are very good and some instruments mm -hmm. are not. 
So we have to pray to be a good instrument in the service of Krishna. Okay, good. Clear. Clear on this one. Thank you. The other thing we Archana, did... Archana, Archana. Uh, yes, you mm -hmm. Sorry. อ่าคําถามของมาตรีนะคะมาตรีก็ถามเกี่ยวกับความสามารถของมนุษย์ที่คริชนาบอกว่าคริชนาทรงเป็นนะคะตรงนี้เนี่ยมาตรีบอกว
the person who lost the intelligence, they worship the demigod. Just to connection, uh, how do we uh, deal with the demigod so that we don't dance them as well? How do we deal with the demigods so that what? How to deal with demigods because we, we don't want to make any offense to demigods as well. But at the same time, we don't want to watch Krishna say that the, the person who lost the intelligence worship demigod. The person who, who worships him? Who, who worships the demigods? Yeah, the, the person who had uh, uh, lost the intelligence, that they worship. Yes, like okay, so we don't worship the demigods, but we offer our respect to them. We, we can worship them as servants of the Supreme Lord, and we can offer respect to them, but we don't worship them just to get material benefits independent of Lord Krishna. We have to respect the demigods because they're very senior and they're doing an important service on behalf of Krishna, overseeing the affairs of the world, of the material universe. So we respect them, we offer our respects to them, and we don't worship them independently to get something that we understand ultimately Krishna is the Supreme. So often we will worship Krishna first and then whatever we offer to Krishna we can offer to the demigods and then we can take the remnants of the demigods. So we don't just simply worship the demigods. We don't just only simply go to demigods independent. We have to go to Krishna first and then you go to demigods and then like that, we can respect demigods in that way. Or we can pray to demigods to help us to become better in our service to Krishna. You know, there are many people like uh, Sanatana Goswami, he was very devoted to Lord Shiva. But he, he, he respected Lord Shiva as a great Vaishnava. So you can, you can respect the demigods as being great devotees, like Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava, and we can pray to Lord Shiva to give us devotion to Lord Krishna. Now, the, the gopis, they worshipped Katyayani. The gopis were very special. They worshipped Katyayani, but they worshipped the Katyayani to get Krishna as a husband. And so it was a special, very, a very special thing when the gopis worshipped Katyayani. And they, they did that worship to get Krishna as their husband. So that was for the pleasure of Krishna. That but devotees usually, generally, we simply worship Krishna. We respect the, the demigods. If we go to temp temples of the demigod, we will offer respects, we will respect them. But we don't usually take prasadam of the demigods, unless it's first of all Vishnu prasadam, which has been offered to the demigods. Sometimes we go to the to a temple and the the pundit is sitting in you know near to the door and he come out from the door. He normally put the tilak and he would give some uh, first or some one piece of like So it is uh, also it's become offense. It take the sat from them. No, I mean it's customary. We have to. You know, they put some prasad, some tea like on your head, okay, that's not a big deal. You can do that, you know, you can't really avoid that. But uh, we don't take the food offered to the demigods. If they give you something, 
So you may have to take it and then you simply give it away. You give it away. Give it to some dog or something. <laughs> Okay. Archana? I come home from Rodin, Kava, get a gun, who shall love you, Rava, but a lot of coming out of the Baba, my Busha Bokanta, but a mess of Brahma for Kandu and Hina, selling Guru Marabawa, Kokugan, Law Sama Busha, Lago, Lago, Sama Baba, Tagger, Law Kapwa, Bokanda, Doti Long Yaru, Nati Kompokan, Bokan, the Kopen. เอ่อสาวกผู้ยิ่งใหญ่นะคะก็คือเค้าทําเค้าแต่ละท่านเนี่ยก็มีหน้าที่ความรับผิดชอบที่กฤษณะสมมติปล่อยให้ให้ดู
You understand? Yes, my friends. คำถามของโรดีนะคะถามว่าเนี่ยทําไมเนี่ยตอนในส่วนแรกเนี่ยเราก็จบไปแล้วนะ 6 เพราะว่าคริชนาเนี่ยอยากจะให้อรุณะเข้าใจก่อนนะคะเพราะว่าตอนแรกเนี่ยอรุณะบอกถึงสาเหตุของการที่ตนเองเนี่ยไม่อย